Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm actually going to be showing how um, I would typically paint and assemble this particular piece. Now as you see, pretty straightforward. I have already um, painted these and I've just kept this one piece just to show you how I have uh, typically done this. So let's get started. Uh, I have some black diluted paint over here. Just, just diluted, just black and a little bit of water. And I would go on to do the first coat. And typically um, I mix it just to a degree that you know one coat should suffice. And you see like almost instantly this tends to dry off. Um, I'm, I've, I've, I'm just going to be using like uh, uh, two brushes for this. One is this one which is a uh, a two and a, a size I mean a size two and a, this one's a double zero so these are the only two brushes that I'm typically going to be using for this nothing too difficult so if you think your paint is too uh, too thin uh, just just consider doing another coat be careful when you are in in this region typically so you see how I would do this I would wait for that to dry and once it does I would kind of do the other end putting the bead the other side that's it we'll get on to the painting of the ghungru bead now this might be useful for a lot of you who have been asking me about the ghungru beads for a jhumka and all of those so I um, I do nothing different I'm pretty sure most of you do the same thing um, I usually tend to cover the front part of the bead. I know this can be a slow process, but you know what? Not everything has a shortcut. So you might have to just be patient with it. And because these are acrylics, they tend to dry out relatively quicker. So you just wait, let this dry. Once this portion dries, do the back end of it. So what I typically do when I'm when I'm painting this is I would get on with painting all of these, uh, the front side of all of these. By the time I get to, you know, I finish this one, I, I know that the, the first one that I did has already dried so I can just flip it and do the, uh, the back side of the bead. In fact, as I am talking, I realize that this is already like pretty much dry. So what I would do is I would just flip the bead and do the same thing over here. And I'm using an antique gold. Um, antique gold is uh, basically I'm just mixing very, very little black to gold. Uh, it depends on how how antique -y you want the color to be. So this is it. And it gives you a, a very, very neat finish, just a very neat finish. So we can just let that let that dry and you can just rest it maybe on a brush or something like that facing in that direction. And So that's done. So once that is done, you see that it's a it's a beautiful, flawless uh, work that's actually, you know, that's done. There's no gold paint anywhere else. Now what we can do is we can have a little bit of gold. So I'm just using a metallic gold over here. And um, I would typically if you are allergic to, um, you know, paints, I wouldn't recommend this method. Uh, but if you are, if you're not and you know, just, just do take precautions though. And, uh, you know, if you don't want to do it this way at all, just use a brush and then just fill in the color, uh, as you see here. But typically what I would do is I would just, you know, dab a little bit, um, you know, on my hand. I know this is not the best method, uh, but you know, it, it kind of works for me and, um, I would go on multiple coats till it becomes you know prominent like this and uh, what would help don't worry about it crossing the uh, you know that that particular margin or that particular line it's okay we'll there's always way to you know cover that up that's the best thing you can use a little bit of black paint and Cover that up. You may want to go multiple coats. I'll use the double zero brush now, the, the really fine one. 
and I have some um, you know red paint over here I'll just dye I'll just start filling in the color And that's completed. Now that um, you know, you see that there is a there is a change in the in the things that are on my table currently. Um, so these are relatively dry, and uh, I can actually assemble them. And for assembling, what I've what I'm deciding to do is I've painted these um, plain terracotta beads in antique gold. Now I've already uploaded a video on how typically I would paint beads, so you can use that, or you can just mix gold and black on a brush, and then you know just apply it on. And these, by the way, are not terracotta. These are basically small, teeny tiny little wooden beads. Um, now I, I really like using them because you get them in so many colors and so many varieties. So I um, I, I do like using them, um, you know, as uh, sometimes in certain pieces. And I think it would go it could it would go very well with this particular um, piece. So I've kept that ready. Uh, I have taken a count and I've kept it accordingly over here just so that it makes my job a lot easier. I also have like antique um, uh, earring hooks for the earring. So we'll get on to fixing that. Um, this one basically I would be using a dory like this. This is a simple um, you know dory. I think it's readily available in a lot of uh, you know fancy stores and things like that. These are, these are beautiful um, uh, you know they just make they're just something extremely ethnic about the way the whole thing looks uh, in these. So I, I really like these. So it's just, it's a, it's a black one and uh, a very nice, um, you know, nice looking one. So I'm going to be using this one. And what I have here are two thread beads. Now these are pretty commonly found, um, you know, off late. Um, there are a lot of people who do and who make beautiful jewelry out of it as well. So I'm going to be using two of these thread beads and you'll see why. Um, I have my uh, pliers here, I have, uh, you know, which includes the cutter as well. And I have a gear wire here. So this is typically a gear wire, quite a strong, um, quite a strong wire in my opinion. Um, you know, it's, um, I mean, I would typically use this uh, to assemble maybe lighter jewelry. Like these are relatively very light. But if, if I have to say uh, assemble a very big piece, I might think twice about assembling it on this or I might use like multiple rounds of this. So that's that. And obviously you need something like this, which is a crimp bead. Uh, I know you probably think, you know, you cannot see anything through the plastic. So these are really, really small ones. You know, they're really small and uh, you know, they're quite, they're, they're definitely necessary. Um, and um, you know you get these in uh, I think in multiple sizes first I would just assemble the earring it's as simple as that so I have these earrings here these beautiful beautiful super light earrings so I'll keep these aside so let's begin so what I would do is I would take um, I would take a decent length um, you know and probably cut it off now this obviously there is no particular measurement because it totally varies on the length of your chain uh, so you know I would just cut off a certain quantity like that using my cutter and keep that aside what I would also do is I would typically put this in like this. It, this is this is how it needs to basically go go through. But before you put it in, it's very necessary that you actually lock it. Um, now you can actually, like I said, you can actually go through like double if if you want to, you know, really make sure it's it's nice and secure. So I will take one 
crimp bead like it's it's super super tiny I would put this through yeah I would put it through there is actually a hole I don't think you can actually see it but there is a hole and I would I would give a decent length over here and I would kind of hold it and I'll make sure the crimpy kind of goes through both of these so what it does is that it's actually locking in this manner I would bring it till the tip so that it's you know it just it's it's better because it looks neater that way and I would use my plier and kind of just you know make sure it's all nice and secure and press it when I press the bead you press it firmly and you make sure because it's supposed to hold and you'll see that it creates this kind of an impression you know on the um, on this particular thing which kind of locks it securely you know just make sure you are really really pressing it firmly down um, and this helps it you know pretty it, it's it's quite secure um, now comes the thread bead now what I would typically do to the thread bead is I would put this here and I would just put it all the way up here so what happens is that it, it kind of makes the piece look more integrated and I like that in, in jewelry. I think it just gives you a better finish and that's how I use it and this goes perfectly well with the color combination as well so it's, it's just appropriate. Before you actually lock anything, please make sure that your assembling is all right. And if you see here, you know, I see that the wire is kind of jutting out. So I just make sure that it's all in nice and secure because once it's locked in, there is there is very little you can actually do to, uh, you know, kind of if you have made a mistake, then there's very little that you can actually do to correct it at, after you have locked it all in. So the only thing will be for you to cut it off and then redo the whole assembling again. Uh, so that way is, you know, just make sure it's all in place. Obviously, the method again becomes the same. You use another crimp bead. Tiny little one. I put it through this. And then... I bring it back inside this the same way how I started off the only thing is when it comes to the end of it you just have to make sure it's nice and tightly secured so what I would typically do is this might take a little time and a little practice for you to uh, you know just make sure it's it's nice and secure but what I would do is I would gently reduce the distance and um, I always prefer keeping a little extra length in the wire um, and what I would do is I would just go through multiple beads just so that you know it's it's a little bit more secure so I would do it this way so you see that the wire actually has gone through multiple it's not done yet you know it's not done so what I would do is I would typically just gently pull it through so when I pull it through don't apply too much force please remember that these cords are handmade so there can always be uh, you know instances where <laughs> some things might just come loose so just be careful when you are dealing with this um, you know you pull it and you realize that it's all nice and tight and secure please check the piece because you know you see how integrated the piece kind of looks you know you have the beads in place you don't see the wire anywhere in the beginning places um, you know so but this is obviously not done I have to actually lock this and you realize that we have already put in the um, the crimp bead you know we have already put in the crimp bead so now the part is basically to look for the crimp bead and uh, obviously you have to lock it when you are doing this just make sure you are not you are extra careful about not scraping off paint from the uh, piece you know it's Yep, it's not the most straightforward of them all. It's a little bit dicey to kind of do it this way. 
but you know just make sure you press it really nice and firm and there that's it now what I would typically do is I would just cut this off just cut off the excess from there so it's gone down about like a couple of beads and that helps it secure and what that does now is this way so you see that the beads are all nice and secure and I have a completed piece here let's move and see the wire the crimpy it's pretty firm it's quite nice I really hope you like the video everyone and you found it useful because I think a lot of you have been asking me for it I'm not sure as to how well have I you know been able to explain this but um, you know I think it does require a little bit of practice um, the initial one is always the easiest part it's when it gets to the end of it and you try locking it in the most um, neatest manner possible um, you can go actually two rounds like multiple rounds with it but you may have to use a slightly bigger crimp bead because that you do get various sizes so you know that should be easy for you to find uh, these even these dories are these days available in uh, like fancy stores and all of that so should should be dif shouldn't be difficult to um, pick up these I really hope you like this everyone you found this video useful if yes then please like the video subscribe to our YouTube channel and thank you so much for your time thank you so much for watching